Howdy. What are you up to? I'm microwaving stones and write stuff. Sometimes I do videos about things. That's a stone I found in the yard. I thought it is interesting. It might have some reaction potential if you put it in the microwave. And it was reacting. It didn't took long, maybe two minutes. And it glowed already. After the treatment, the stone looked like this. It has almost doubled in size. Its shape has transformed. It uh, experienced some kind of a eruption. And all just because I put it in the microwave. Let's go over to Wikipedia and read quickly about the microwave oven. A microwave oven, commonly referred as to as microwave, is an electric oven that heats and cooks food by exposing it to electromagnetic radiation in the microwave frequency range. This induces polar molecules in the food to rotate and produce thermal energy in a process known as dielectric heating. The microwave ovens heat foods quickly and efficiently because excitation is fairly uniform in the outer 25 to 38 millimeters of a homogeneous high water content food item. Many of the stones I was putting into the microwave that started to steam. So the water came out. The development of the cavity magnetron in the United Kingdom made possible the production of electromagnetic waves of a small enough wavelength microwaves. American engineer Percy Spencer is generally credited with inventing the modern microwave oven after World War II. From radar technology developed during the war, named the radar range, it was first sold in 1946. Yeah, I'm really trying to figure out some things about this. And I tend to try to ask people who know better than I do. In other words, usually they are very well educated people. Not as I am. I am not educated in a sense or I'm not I don't have any science education or whatsoever geological survey of Finland impartial research and services in support of decision making in industry academia and wider society to accelerate the transition to a sustainable and carbon neutral world yes So I took contact with a few people I had contact earlier from the GTK, what we just watched. There's more text to that, but that's just a screenshot and the same pictures I just showed you before. Now let's see when and if they are answering. Maybe some of them have, or hopefully they have, read my paper which got released in 2021. Plate tectonic issues, the influence of electricity in rock forming processes and a coherent connection between science, mythology and history of Finland. A sea pinch stone and a dragon. And if you go down into, dive a bit more into the paper, we have, for example, these kind of rock formations. <clears throat> This is a little bit farther away from the same rocks. We are talking about geothermal potential in Finland.
plasma discharges, craters, rocks, very interesting rocks. Molten metal on top of rocks. And of course, the surface conductivity anomaly and the copper mines. So obviously, sulfur and copper somewhere, somehow belong together. <clears throat> I don't know yet how, what's the connection. But there is something about sulfur and copper. and electricity but there is also mountain water a new approach to mounting forming volcanism glaciers and the role of water in the electric environment i wrote it in one word now it's two words but anyway Textbooks and geoscientists may be wrong about how the Alps were formed. ETH Zurich. A thought-provoking article that led to the question of how many other accepted theories might be wrong too. No. Maybe Pete, but that paper is still under construction. But let's go check out the ETH Zurich, and that's just something I stumbled across, which I found very interesting. Application master, like if you want to get a master of something. Depending on your educational background, there are different requirements for your application to our master's degree programs. The basis for admission is always your undergraduate degree. If you even if you already hold an advanced degree. Admission. ETH ranks as one of the top international universities in the technical and scientific disciplines. Admission to its master's degree programs is highly selective. We are looking for applications from excellent bachelor graduates from universities comparable to ETH Zurich that meet the degree-specific requirement profiles. Why is the admission process highly selective? Switzerland's education system is very selective. Yeah, I went to school there, I know. Commence, commencing in high school. ETH Zurich's undergraduate programs are highly competitive and only the very best students pass the rigorous exams in the first years of the bachelor's degree programs. The level of basic education is thus very high and the master's degree programs build on this foundation. Hence, we expect no less from candidates that are admitted to our graduate programs and, in general, only strong students from internationally reputed universities are accepted. What are reputed universities? Or comparable degrees? The international university landscape is highly diverse and offers countless options. The chances of being admitted to one of the master's degree programs at ETH Zurich are better for applications. Applicants who have been educated in a relevant subject area at a comparable level and have achieved excellent academic results. When evaluating, when evaluating, evaluating international applications, we orientate ourselves to the established university rankings, DHE QS ETC as well as to previous admission experiences. We also look favorably to candidates from nationally top-ranked universities. So, I also had a little bit contact with the ETH before my paper got released, the mountain water, and afterwards. 
And this is one of the answers I got. I put all the names out. Obviously, you have noticed there. I don't show names of those people. But anyway, you have very detailed information and questions. I agree with Professor Wall on the plausibility of ferrous water. However, I'm not an expert in that sense. And I think if Prof. Hammer forwarded the PSI to you, it's probably because they have people more skilled in the field. Yeah, I still wait an answer for them too. But I'm sorry you didn't get an answer. Oh, yeah. I know even less about volcanoes and plasma. I'm most involved with glacier modeling, so I doubt I can help you with your questions. And unfortunately, we don't have an expert in that sense in our group. Sorry, I'm not very helpful. Best regards. That's an answer from a second professor. I, I don't... Maybe he's a professor already. I think he is. And the first one was a professor of higher degree, PhD. So... I offered them, could we make some work together, you know? How would it be? Like, let's, I provide stuff I have and let's check it out. We compare just for the science. Obviously, they are not very helpful. They don't know. And if we go back to the ETH page, we are looking for applications from excellent bachelor graduates from universities comparable to the ETH Zurich. Yeah, there's no way I think I ever would make it into the ETH Zurich University, like, you know. Whatever the topic would be. Because it would take so many years, I would be very old. <laughs> and on the other hand, I'm not living in Switzerland anymore, so it's quite impossible. So I offered them, like, you know, you have my mountain, waiter, mountain water paper. You said you find it very interesting. So why not talk? Why not just make a case out of the whole thing? Obviously, I know things they don't know, as he says. So what's the thing that, now, why don't they just take help? Yeah, I wouldn't mind if I would get paid for that. They are paid for not knowing. I'm unpaid for knowing. And I don't get any answer. So what you are up to in your soul, so to say, spare time, free time, Now, this is our world. If you all watch the news, you can see what the adults did for us. Do you like it? Did you notice there are some things going on? Do you read news from other countries? Do, are you able to understand different kinds of languages? English isn't my native language. I'm not claiming to be good at it. I can communicate some stuff, 
but my English is not good. Probably aren't or like Swiss German or German. Like I haven't used them for a while. It's very sketchy to speak another language. Finnish I speak since 15 years or something. My French, I forgot because I haven't been using it for what, 20 years, a little bit less maybe. I understand some, like if I read and people are talking, I understand something, but it's not in my ear anymore. But if you are able to speak several languages, and then you can read news from other countries in their own language. Now, as I, like I said many times, if you go to Wikipedia in a certain language, you get a certain content. If you change the language, the content might differ very much. There's just, usually there's just much more information. If you are looking something up on Wikipedia, which is a German thing, so to say, a place in Germany or the Alps or whatsoever, if you look it up in English, there is less information probably than it would be in German or French because of its location and the languages there. But anyway, I drifted off. Yeah. We are living in the world created by the adults, so to say. And it's maybe time to wise up. Yeah, that's where we, that's, that's the world we're living in. Highly selective. Degree specific requirement profiles. Yes. What about interdisciplinarity? You take everything into account. <laughs> Too much for them to handle. Doesn't fit in the paradigm. You have to be specialized in order to just know about one little thing. And you don't know anything about the rest. How you could ever figure out the truth. But anyway. Let's see if I get some answers. Thanks. Bye.